What's up guys, we're going to be making use of Burp Suite Proxy to solve this challenge. We'll just quickly read through the information. This lab contains an SQL injection vulnerability in the product category filter. When the user selects a category, the application carries out an SQL query like the following. Select all from products where category equals gifts and released equals one. So there's two limiting factors to this specific query. Firstly, it's only selecting from a specific category, gifts, and it's then only selecting products that have been released. So we'd be interested to see if we can construct a query which will show us products from any category, regardless of whether that product has actually been released. It then says to solve the lab, perform an SQL injection attack that causes the application to display details of all products in any category, both released and unreleased. Okay, with that in mind, let's access the lab. So we have the lab on the right, we have Burp Suite Proxy on the left. Everything's fully set up with Burp. If you want to know how we did this with Black Arch, you can check out my video Burp Suite on Black Arch. Now we can see in the target tab, we have a number of different URLs here in the proxy history. We're only interested in this top one, which matches up with the URL of our lab. So we're going to right click on that and choose add to scope. We're then going to choose yes, to tell Burp to stop sending out of scope items to the history. Now we can still see that we have those other URLs there. So can we get rid of those? We can make use of Burp filters for that. If I click on this filter section, we can choose this option, show only in scope items. There we go, that's nice and tidy. We just have our lab here. And if we look halfway down our lab page, we can see the products categories that were referred to. So let's just click on one of them. Let's click on gifts. And we'll see that in this parameter section under filter, we have category equals gifts. If we click on that, we can see the specific HTTP request that was sent. So we're getting our URL forward slash filter, then our query string category equals gifts. And we can confirm that if we just check out the URL bar and scroll all the way along, we have our URL forward slash filter, we have a question mark, which indicates the beginning of a query string. Then we have a query parameter called category, and the value of that parameter is gifts. Now we've been told that that specific parameter is vulnerable. So we want to send this specific HTTP request to the repeater. This means we can make modifications and then resubmit it to the lab. Once we do that, we'll notice that the repeater tab lights up. And if we head there, we can see the copy of this specific request with our query parameter gifts. Now, if we just highlight that gifts section, we can modify this parameter under the section decoded from URL encoding. What this means is whatever we type into this box will be URL encoded and then placed into our HTTP request. So let's construct a payload here. We're going to end this with a single quote. We're going to say all one equals one. Then we're going to use our comment character. What this will do is it will completely bypass that released part of the query. And also it won't just select a product that belongs to the gifts category. It will select any product from any category so long as one equals one and one is always going to equal one. So this basically bypasses both of the constraints on that SQL query. It's going to select every product in the database, regardless of its category, regardless of whether it's released or not. If we choose apply changes, we'll now see the URL encoded version of that parameter. And we can choose the option send to submit our request to the lab. We do that, we get the message, congratulations, you solved the lab. Now, of course, although the page is flashing us this message, it doesn't actually change the output on the page. We can actually check out this render tab for the response we've received. And we'll see that it does in fact show us all of the products stored in the database. So that's pretty much it. We've successfully constructed an SQL injection attack and solved the lab. Hope it was helpful. Thanks very much for watching guys.